Tesla currently has four gigafactories, with some in construction and others rapidly expanding. The term gigafactory was invented by Elon Musk that refers to a battery plant with a production output so large that it goes into the unit gigawatt hour. Tesla's first gigafactory in Reno, Nevada has a production capacity of 35 gigawatt hours and is the highest volume battery plant in the world. In hindsight, this may seem like a large amount. However, in Tesla's Q1 2020 conference call, Elon Musk has recently hinted at an upcoming Terra factory. A terawatt hour is a unit which translates to 1000 gigawatt hours, an amount that is over 28 times larger than Tesla's Gigafactory 1. Imagine having 28 Gigafactory 1s all combined into one gigantic building. In this video, I'm going to go deep into the numbers to determine the production capacity in vehicles of the upcoming Terra factory. With Tesla's battery investor day approaching, Elon Musk has been hyping up the event a lot. At Tesla's Q1 2020 conference call, Musk stated that yes, actually we don't want to preempt battery day. We want to leave the exciting news for that day, but there will be a lot of exciting news to tell. And I think it will be one of the most exciting days in Tesla's history and we're just trying to find the right timing for that. Tesla's upcoming Terra factory will ultimately utilize the new technology achieved in Tesla's secret project codenamed Roadrunner that looks to bring the battery production cost down to $100 per kilowatt hour. Elon Musk also claimed that Tesla's battery investor day would either be in California or Texas. We know that the Terra factory, which will produce the Cybertruck, will not be in California, as Musk has already stated that the Terra factory would be in the Midwestern US. California is where Tesla is currently running its pilot production line for the Roadrunner's battery cells. On the other hand, hosting the battery investor day at Texas implies that the Terra factory will be built in Texas. In 2019, Tesla's Gigafactory 1 allowed for an output of 367,500 vehicles. If Tesla was to build a Terra factory, this would mean Tesla would have a production capacity 28 times larger than the Gigafactory 1. Tesla's Terra factory would have the capacity to deliver over 10 million vehicles, assuming the battery size is equivalent to each vehicle in 2019. With at least 500,000 pre-orders, the Cybertruck has already proven that it has plenty of demand. A Terra factory would mean that Tesla may be able to catch up to that demand and allow the company to move on to the next phase of production. With more vehicles in production, this would also mean higher profit margins. Since Tesla will be able to mass produce Cybertrucks on a larger scale, Tesla's team would become faster at production as they continue to get more skilled. We saw this happen in Tesla's Q1 2020 earnings, where Tesla's margin excluding credits increased due to the fact that Tesla's team began to become more efficient at manufacturing the Model 3. With an output in the terawatts, Tesla's new Gigafactory would also require a large amount of resources. Elon Musk has once discussed getting into the lithium mining business, and in this earnings call, Tesla's team discussed vertically integrating to the maximum extent. I'll also add that our gigas have gotten bigger. Yes. And uh, well, we arguably could be start being called Terra. Yes, uh, with multiple products as well. And so, you know, the absolute number of gigafactories we may ultimately build might be less, but each one is larger. Uh, and that's under a belief that it's just significant efficiencies by having as much as possible and similar product lines under the same roof um, and as much vertical integration as possible all in one facility. Just a couple hundred miles away from Tesla's Gigafactory 1, there is an area named Lithium Valley with a huge amount of easily exploitable lithium. This area lies between Oregon and Nevada and is named Orovada. While this remains as speculation, it could be possible that Tesla gets into the lithium mining business. Um, now my question is, um, will there be enough, is there enough lithium supply in the world to enable you to build everything that you ambitiously want to build in the next few years at an affordable price? I mean, the, the, I mean, the, the nice thing about lithium is it's extremely abundant on Earth. Um, I mean, lithium is the third most common element in the universe. Um, and I mean, the reason we don't have just free hydrogen available is because it's bound up in water. Um, and then the reason we don't have a lot of helium is because it floats away. Uh, but, um, but lithium does not float away. And, um, and so it is, it, there's lithium in, in salt form virtually everywhere. Um, and so that there is, 
definitely no supply issues with lithium. Um, but to get to the, the nuances of the question, which you're probably aiming for, which is like in, in the time frame available, like in the next year or two years, will there be lithium in the form that, um, that, that Tesla needs, which is lithium hydroxide, um, in sufficient quantities at a price that is reasonable and does not materially affect the cost of the Model 3? Um, JV. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Um, the, uh, I mean, you're, you're, it's exactly right. I mean, we need to make sure that we have the, the extraction and processing um, capacity, but it's, it's not that much different than, than lining up other supply chain elements or components even for the car. It just has a little bit longer lead time. And you know, Tesla has spent a lot of time working with all the different lithium uh, companies, all the way from tiny startups up to the, the sort of large name lithium companies all around the world. And we're working with them to figure out what are the most economical and efficient ways to either have them invest or, or um, you know, perhaps even have us be involved uh, to make sure that they're investing on the right timeline to have the capacity ready when we need it. And we're also finding ways to potentially even reduce the, the cost here below what people had done in the past. Because a little bit like with batteries in the Gigafactory, you know, lithium is not a mature market. It's not traded on the London Metal Exchange. It's, it's subject to a lot of speculation right now. And you know, there, there's you know, kind of lithium booms that happen in different parts of the world. This does not relate to the actual cost of production of lithium. You know, that is relatively stable. And as Elon said, there's a lot of it. So you know, once we can you know, appropriately invest in the re extraction, refining, processing, you know, the price of lithium is quite low and quite stable. Overall, Tesla's goal is to accelerate the transition to sustainable energies. And with the legacy automakers struggling to create gigafactories, it's becoming clear that the gap between Tesla and legacy automakers is still continuing to widen. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting me on Patreon in the description below. I appreciate your support.